Bringing out the SIG M17 pistol today, but it's not exactly standard issue. Rocking the Holosun SCS for the P320 line, a threaded barrel from Backup Tactical, plus the new Magpul AMAG17 on this week's Gear Grind. Hey, I'm Travis, the product guy at AT3Tactical.com. Basically, when we bring stuff onto the site, I'm the guy making sure it's gonna be quality, affordable, cool, or a mix of all three. We wanna carry stuff that excites us, things we'd actually use, not a bunch of crap. We're getting a lot deeper into the pistol market, and I wanted to shine a light on some upgrades for the P320 line of pistols, which includes the M17, which has the same dimensions and capacity as a P320 full size, as well as the M18, which is more akin to a P320 compact. So if you want to add capability to this modern military sidearm, there's a great aftermarket just waiting for you. As always, we're hitting on the most important five Fs when it comes to today's gun gear. Fit, feel, form, function, and features. And I'm going to try and get through it in about five minutes. Let's roll. Let's get started by looking at the backup tactical threaded barrel for the M17 and P320 full-size pistols. Fit. The backup barrel fits pretty easily into your slide. I'm always a little bit leery of drop-in pistol barrels, even on striker-fired guns. You never know until you get the product in hand how much a barrel is going to change how your gun feels, the tolerances and clearances are appropriate, but I didn't really have an issue, which is a big plus. If you've never installed a threaded barrel in your pistol before, just make sure to remove the thread protector first before you drop it in like you would any other pistol barrel. This is a half by 28 thread, by the way, so you definitely have room for compensators and suppressors. Feel. This barrel doesn't really alter the feel of this gun overall, which to me is a good thing. Especially when you're dealing with altering the overall weight in your pistol slide, you start to change how this gun is going to function. But since this barrel's profile closely matches the stock M17 barrel, you're not really changing much except for a half inch of barrel thread. Now, when you start putting muzzle devices into that picture, there may be adjustments to be made, whether that's ammo selection or recoil spring weight. But changing the barrel itself, not going to be a huge factor on function. Cracking these out of the package, these barrels do look great, and they look even better once they're installed. Before installing, you might want to give them a quick wipe down, maybe run a bit of oil through the bore, but that's just basic stuff. One of these barrels with the gold titanium nitride finish had a couple small blemishes by the chamber, and I think maybe they need to dial back their laser engraver's power a bit, because these look pretty cooked. But other than that, these look solid. For the P320, these come in black nitride, and Backup advertises this as FDE, but it's gold. Uh, they do make these for the full size and compact versions of the P320. Function. Like I pointed out before, the key feature that I'm looking for when swapping barrels is that function is consistent, and that's been my experience with the backup barrel. In terms of cycling and reliability, I've not ran into any issues, and I don't exactly see that changing over time. This barrel is going to get worn in like any other, but you're going to have to shoot a lot of rounds before you see a degradation in accuracy, among other things. By the way, don't expect huge accuracy improvements. That stayed pretty much the same for me, which is totally fine. Features. So what do you get with a barrel like this? Obviously the primary advantage is the threads. Expanding the options you have to accept a can or comp is huge on its own. And if you have a stock P320, these will work a treat. And if you're into these military models, these barrels do come in the compact M18 length or the full size M17 length you see here. It's all about options and Backup Tactical has some good ones at prices slightly below a lot of their competitors. In my opinion, that's a good buy. Now, let's talk about a metal pistol magazine. I know, revolutionary stuff. This is the Magpul AMAG-17, and it's a bigger deal than it seems. Fit. As you'd expect, these 17-round magazines fit perfectly into your full-size grips on SIG P320 line pistols. They also work on models with flared mag wells and more compact grips made for 15-round mags. In my experience, these lock in securely, don't introduce any weakness, and generally fit exactly as your stock P320 mags. So that's great. Feel. Like with any Magpul product, I expect something that's going to feel substantial and do the job I need it to do. Because these alloy magazines are mostly stainless steel with Magpul's polymer for the floor plate, it's pretty easy to inspire confidence from feel alone. Speaking about the floor plate, it's really easy to get purchase on the bottom of the grip if you ever have to rip a mag out of a pistol that's gotten dirty. The stock mags do a decent job of this, but I think the AMAG is a little bit more positive because there's no additional plastic that's just for looks. Form. Speaking of how this looks when it's actually in use, some of you might not be huge fans of how this mag exposes a strip of shiny metal on either side. 
In a standard P320 frame, you'll just see a little bit of metal above the floor plate. Definitely doesn't bother me any, but if you're concerned about visibility, maybe hit this part with some cold blue and call it a day. Beyond that, you do also get a round counter up to 17 on the back, plus Magpul's dot matrix system if you want to number your mags and designate what you'll use at the range versus carry. As you may know, predominantly metal mags aren't usually Magpul's thing. They've produced all polymer mags for AR and AK platforms, as well as for Glock magazines. So how do these stack up? In my experience, these are pretty good performers. I started stacking a few different parts on top of each other for this video, but I didn't see any issues that I would attribute to feeding or construction of the magazine. They lock open on the last round, drop free easily, and do everything you need your P320 mag to do. I mostly tested with just ball ammo, but it should work just fine with carry ammo as well. Okay, so these are pistol magazines. They're made of metal, so what's the big deal? Why would anybody be excited about this? and that would be the price. The AMAG retails for just $35. SIG sells their equivalent 17 round magazine for around 50 bucks. If you're buying a SIG, you're probably getting two or three mags anyway, but as they say, buy them cheap and stack them deep. Whether you wanna stay geared up for training, competition, or general preparedness, having good mags at a good price is going to help you out a lot. Now, let's talk about optics. This is a pretty recent innovation from Holosun, the SCS, or solar charging site, made specifically for optics-ready pistols. Fit. As you can see, the SCS fits directly on the optics-ready M17 slide, and it'll be the same for different flavors of the P320. The included hardware bolts this site directly onto the slide and even matches the lines of the metal around it. And that's this version of the SCS. You can also get versions that Holosun makes custom for the Glock MOS, Walther PDP 2.0, HKVP9, and the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0. All of those fit directly to the factory optics-ready slides with no need for adapter plates. Direct mount goodness all the way. This specific model of the SCS should also work for most slides milled for Delta Point Pro pattern red dots, but you might want to check on getting the correct screws for it. Feel. The SCS is light, even with this fairly chunky closed emitter housing, plus the solar collector at the top here. It's made from 7075 T6 aluminum, which is a great choice for a tough carry pistol optic. You do also get audible clicks when adjusting wind engine elevation at 1.5 MOA per click. The button at the slide, which you use to adjust your reticle and power settings, is pretty tiny, but the clicks are pretty positive for that as well but you might have trouble getting to it if you're wearing gloves. The SCS really does have a nice look that suits the M17 or P320. SIG makes their own optics, of course, and they have some pretty compelling features and great looks as well, but they're definitely more traditional full-size pistol red dots. Holosun's leaning into something that's ultra compact, low to the slide, and chunky enough for durability. If you're rocking the tactical peanut butter look, you aren't going to be able to get a matching finish from Holosun, at least at this time, but that's pretty minor all things considered. Function. In terms of reliability, the first thing I look out for is whether a new red dot has issues maintaining power under recoil. I've had plenty of dots turn off and on intermittently, and thankfully I didn't have that problem with the SCS. Consistent performance all around with a great full range of brightness that works great in dim or bright conditions. Auto brightness also works really well with a multi-directional reading that adapts to your environment. And of course, Holosun's 2 MOA dot with 32 MOA circle works great for quickly lining up accurate shots. Now, the SCS sights for pistols only come with a green reticle, which was not an issue for me. In fact, I like it a lot. But if you have to have red, you'll have to look elsewhere. Now, I've told you all that to lead you to the real different innovative part of this sight and why it's so compact. The SCS doesn't have a battery at least not in the traditional sense. This site is purely charged by sunlight and uses a non-removable internal battery. And because this uses such a good light sensor, high efficiency LED, it basically means you can leave this thing in moderate sunlight now and then and continuously top up a 20,000 hour battery life. In theory, you never have to worry about power again with a tough little red dot site. Now in practice, it means if you do have a power issue, you'll have to send the whole thing back to Holosun for service instead of simply replacing a battery. Something to consider in the long haul, but I've had Holosuns for the long haul, and they tend to work just fine. I really did a video about P320 pistols without talking about swapping the grip module. I'll dig more into the aftermarket for these pistols and get back with you guys. But next time, I'm thinking we should change things up a bit more. Maybe talk about some off-the-shelf firearms you guys are interested in. Chime in down in the comments if you've got a gun you want to see featured here. 
And as always, if there's an AR or pistol upgrade you want me to go hands-on with, drop a comment down below, give you my honest take on it in a future video. Peace.